So the Black Girl Gamers situation has intensified beyond comprehension. I've had some time to do some digging and I have found some crazy things that I want to share with you all today. Beginning with some Black Girl Gamers discourse, which is only intensified while we wait for the impending reveal of the contents of the cease and desist letter from Black Girl Gamers. This is going to be shown by WDW Pro, Valiant Renegade. They say that they're going to be talking about it tonight. We'll see about that. I'll report on it as soon as we get that information. But check this out from Packer Girl and we will get started. Black Girl Gamers responds to Gothics TV's recent accusations with a long two-part thread of the YouTuber's engagement with Black Girl Gamers from 2017 to the present day. So Black Girl Gamers comes out against Gothics TV once again after Gothics has done some interviews and talked about her past and how she was involved with Black Girl Gamers. I have watched some of those and I have also read everything that Black Girl Gamers has said on behalf of themselves against Gothics TV. And I got to tell you, there is some hypocrisy in their post. The person who wrote it argues over and over again that Gothics TV left of her own accord and that she left because she was anti-black or she was pushing those kinds of messages. But I did not see that in the things that they posted about her, the messages that they shared. Gothics started sharing opinions that the people in the Discord or in their community did not like, and they were either talking bad about her in podcasts or they were talking bad about her to J.N. Lopez or whoever was in charge and in communication with gothics and the more that you dig the more that it is revealed that gothics tv just wasn't at fault here because the people that were complaining about her apparently did reveal themselves to the person that was in charge and then that person pointed that out to gothics in messages saying oh some people have said this about you or some people have said that about you and they just never really did anything about it. And she even justified some of their actions in a way. So I'm really not interested in reading their excuses for this. I think that when we read the cease and desist letter and get the contents from therein, I think that we will have a better understanding of the situation and on how to move forward. But in the meantime, I want to show you guys something interesting because it's not so much black girl gamers that are the problem today. It's their followers, their supporters, the people that defend them and Sweet Baby Inc. and other companies like them, including Kotaku writers, etc etc i have a very interesting post to share with you guys today check this out this is also posted by packer girl um and she posts that psychonauts 2 art director lisette teeter montgomery likens black girl gamers critics to <laughs> I'm not going to say the word, but R-A-P-I-S-T, colonizers. So that's what she compares the people complaining about Black Girl Gamers to. Wow, that's a, that's a huge blanket statement. I mean, honestly, in some ways that could be considered defamatory. I'm not sure I'm not actually a lawyer or anything. First from Osama Dorius, white men harassing black women for having spaces that are meant to protect black women from the harassment of white men. To which Lisette Teeter Montgomery... And she has GDC in her title as well. <laughs> Not surprised. This is how R-A-P-I-S-T colonizers think. I can't have her, so I will force myself on her. I can't share it, so I will destroy it. And she deserves it because D-E-I, these people are vile. So that's what she said. I'm not sure what gamer she is uh, re referring to. I have never seen anybody say something that evil before. I mean, does she even know who this person is talking about? Th th there are no specific examples. So how is this huge, horribly racist <laughs> and like accusational statement just being posted like this without any factual information to back it up? Just who is Lisette Teeter Montgomery and Osama Dorius? Right? Well, no, maybe if I go onto her page, I can get some sort of comment. Oh, OK. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Now that makes perfect sense. So let's read her page. CEO of Cornerstone Studios. So that's her studios. And then she was the art director for Psychonauts 2, right? In the past, that was her most recent gig. But guess what else? She's also an advisor for We Are Game Heads. It says right here, building a pipeline into tech and game dev for low-income youth and youth of color. Video games are not just what we learn. They are how we learn. Very interesting. Wings Fund Me, indie games by diverse teams, starting with games by women and gender marginalized developers apply now blah 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 rainbow emoji awards and noms bafta games and the game awards and her tweets are protected so nobody can uh, conversate with her I, I wonder why that is maybe it's because of this horrible thing she said i can only imagine how many replies she got it must have just been a firestorm but if you guys know me you know that i had to do a little bit of digging i was just so curious about lisette teeter montgomery because she 
talks like she knows what she's talking about, like she's been in the space. And I was actually correct. Did you know that that park place made an article about them? I didn't even know about this until this morning when I was doing research on Teeter Montgomery. Cornerstone Interactive Studios CEO declared that video game executives have surrendered the video game industry to angry racists and sexists. And they go about uh, contrasting what she said to another uh, gaming exec who said some things. They were talking about stats and uh, what kind of impact diversity is having on the industry. But I'm more interested in the person and what she's been involved with. So after rubbing some sticks together, I was able to come up with this page, which is actually on her website. It's a public thing, so there's no malicious doxing here or anything like that. But this is what it says on her page. Art director, co-founder, Cornerstone Interactive. Last project, Psychonauts 2. And it says the same things that we saw earlier, but then it says, Lisette Teeter Montgomery is an art director with over 22 years of industry experience and 14 shipped titles. And we're going to get into those titles in just a second, but that is insane. So she's been here for over 20 years, and that says a lot because the gaming industry has changed drastically in just that amount of time. Specializing in creating studio cultures where art and creativity thrive, she has led art studios, large and small, in the U.S., Japan, China, Australia, India, and the Philippines. Lisette has contributed to some of the industry's highest profile games, including Tiger Woods Golf, The Simpsons, Dante's Inferno, Dance Central 3, Sims 4, South Park, and Transformers Age of Extinction for Android and iOS. Her most recent project was Psychonauts 2 with Double Fine Productions. You guys probably know them. Brutal Legend, right? She is currently launching Cornerstone Interactive, a new studio focused on re-imaging, or maybe that meant to say reimagining cinematic and interactive experiences. So Lisette's list of personal achievements are just as impressive. This is where it kind of gets weird, man. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Buckle up just in case. She has been been featured on CNN, invited to the White House, and guess what else? She's a member of the U.S. Department of State's Speakers Bureau, whatever that means. I'm going to look at that too. Mrs. Teeter Montgomery has been a featured keynote speaker at NASA. Goggle, oh, Goggle, they meant to say Google, or she did. Intel. <laughs> These are big names. Black Girls Code, Girls Who Code, and more. She has also been named one of the most powerful women in tech by Business Insider, which I find fascinating because until today, I've never really heard of her. I think I saw her name passed around. Maybe I named her as one of the advisors at GDC, but I've never actually looked into this lady. And she's been involved in a lot of things. You got to check this out. What, what is with that U.S. State Department thing? What, what was that? So I looked this up, the U.S. Speaker Program, this is all I could find in reference to the U.S. Department of State's Speakers Bureau, that's a mouthful, but it says right here that the U.S. Speaker Program collaborates with U.S. embassies and consulates around the world to engage professional foreign audiences with American citizen experts on topics of strategic importance to the United States, providing alternatives to violent extremism, advancing economic prosperity, expanding educational diplomacy, and fostering open government and civil society. So this lady right here who's going on Twitter screaming about white colonizers assaulting people, making those huge accusations. She's worked with these people. She's spoken <laughs> on behalf of the U.S. State Department. I, I don't understand. And she's been a speaker at all of these huge events like Google, NASA. Like what in the world is going on there? So I looked up Black Girls Code one of the companies that she worked with. So what does it say right here? Black Girls Code sues former CEO and founder Kimberly Bryant for hijacking website. The lawsuit comes amid turmoil over the founders firing this month. Uh, apparently there was some kind of weird hostile takeover and the CEO kind of got screwed out of her position. Days after her termination, Bryant caused ter administrative credentials to be used to hijack BGC's website, the lawsuit states, which just displayed a self-serving press release that discloses BGC's confidential and privileged information and she filed and amended a federal lawsuit so that whole situation seems like a big mess i don't know if it speaks for the company as a whole this situation it sounds like a special situation but uh yeah i'm good i'm not going to dig down that rabbit hole just yet but i will dig into some of the games that she has been involved with so that you guys can get a clear picture of her involvement in games and what she actually does so check this out right here psychonauts 2 i played that game yeah, it was all right. The art direction was pretty unique, but it was art direction that was inspired by the first game. I don't know if she was involved in that game, but she was the art director for this. This was her big thing. And then South Park, the fractured but whole, 
I don't know if you guys have played that game, but it, it, it presses a lot of buttons for a lot of demographics. Let me tell you that. And South Park has always been known for that. The Fractured But Whole, definitely not a game Lisette would be involved with, especially since they stereotype gleefully and then <laughs> lean into those stereotypes and then flip them on their heads. But you know what? Why not? Let's dig into that one too. So it says right here, I lead the art team at Ubisoft SF Studio through developing the various gameplay focused portions of the art pipeline. We worked closely with Matt Stone, Trey Parker, and the South Park team on story, cinematics, and sets while I provided art direction for puzzles, combat moves, and other game focused elements. So they were a lot more involved than people think. She says that she was leading the art team at Ubisoft SF. If you scroll down here, I, it says that she did some super moves. They did superhero animations or modeling, CG modeling, uh, animations. This part I found to be absolutely insane. You guys got to see this. So she said, since it was our job to oversee all gameplay elements in addition to puzzles and combat, I led the art direction on all the mini games as well. So the mini games she was in charge of, she said, I came to learn that there is a long-standing rivalry between Kanye West and South Park Studios. So they asked us to troll Kanye's new unreleased video game. So before I read what she says next, I know the Kanye situation. I know the episode, what they're talking about, what she's referencing to. Yes, I understand the context there, everybody. So check this out, what she says next. Matt and Trey certainly had some ideas on what this game should be about. And after a little gameplay inspiration, we made this. Sorry, Kanye. Yeah, so we're gonna watch some of this. Check this out. And so, Siemens sidekick had to help the gay fish's mom fly to heaven on a stream of rainbow unicorn fun. Had to help the gay fish's mom fly to heaven on a stream of rainbow unicorn farts. So that's what we're seeing right now. Unicorn farts, art direction from Lisette herself, Peter Montgomery, in what looks to be some kind of Flappy Bird-esque game. <laughs> Instead of pipes and a bird, you have a uh, Greek marble columns. We're blowing minds up in here. We're blowing minds up in here. Yep, there you go. So this is the this is the stuff that she was doing for that company. She just rolled over and did what the white man said. How could she do that? Especially when she thinks so lowly of them. I mean, look at this comment from her. Not surprised. This is how R-A-P-I-S-T colonizers think. I can't have her, so I will force myself on her. That's what she thinks of people who dislike what Black Girl Gamers is allegedly doing with their hiring practices and the way that they react to people and how they threaten everybody. That's what people who disagree with that rhetoric are to you. A bunch of colonizers. I'm so sick of that stupid colonizer rhetoric. It's like, we got to remove all the colonizers from gaming. Like what in the world does any of that have to do with video games and making fun games for people to play? She's making unicorn farts in a game made by a white man. She had no problem making that. She knows that South Park, everybody knows that South Park stereotypes a bunch of demographics and does not care about it, doesn't care what kind of backlash they get. They're, they're very proud of speaking out against the norm. And that's what they've been doing for many years. And she probably knew that coming into work with them, but she did. And she led the art team and she did what they said, brought their ideas to life. And it's not the only time that she was involved in games that we know and love and grew up with. She's got a lot that she's worked on. It actually took me a little bit of digging, but I managed to find this. And this is a demo reel from 2010. So this video was released 13 years ago on Vimeo. This apparently Lisette had an account here. I was just curious what kind of video game she's worked on. And in her demo reel, it showcases some things I, I suppose have to do with the tags, character modeling, texturing, environment modeling, VFX. So let's watch some of this so you can get an idea of what kind of stuff she's made. So she has worked on Dante's Inferno cutscene stuff. So like this stuff for Dante's Inferno, just like really interesting things. What in the world was that? That was a monster that you apparently fight in Dante's Inferno. So she did stuff in The Godfather 2 as well, CG modeling, color rendering. So this is the kind of stuff that she did. I guess she worked on animations. She was in the Simpsons game. She worked on that probably for art, CG modeling, etc., etc. I mean, Tiger Woods, yeah, just like they said. So she was showing this stuff off many, many years ago. Look at this. Even Jade Empire. Oh man, I played the crap out of that game. She probably did animations here. So yeah. Guys, she's been in this for a while. 
She has been in the game for a long time. Why is she going on social media, coming out in defense of black girl gamers and just writing off such a wide array of people? And the situation probably isn't helped by the fact that she had two events that she presented over at GDC, supposedly an anti-white, anti-male propagandist who has been given a literal platform by both the government and by these huge big tech companies like Google, and NASA being able to go on stage and talk about a number of things. It's kind of surprising to see how active she is in the gaming industry, considering her involvement in other establishments and the things that she says at GDC, the things that she says about people online, not only responding so aggressively and violently with her rhetoric, but also lacking context of the situation, just immediately siding with black girl gamers who I assume are not even as well known as she is, although I have never heard of either of them before the situation started. I have only heard about them because of everything that they are saying like right now i the only reason that i know about anything that this woman does is because one she posts all of her info online for people to see because she wants people to see it and also because she says such horrible negative things to gamers just blanketing them all under one umbrella of racism and bigotry trying to paint this huge false narrative to make it look like white male gamers are a problem or just male gamers or just white gamers i have no idea but she thinks that all of them are colonizers for some reason is it that even applies to this generation of white people or to any generation of people in any way in the current generation of the United States of America, it's just insane to think this way. And the, the fact that she has such a huge position making such claims without any kind of negative consequence is insane to me because what is it that other people are getting sued for or legal action presented against them for? Like that Park Place just reading their own information that's on their website and they're about to get sued? Are you kidding me? with people this high up saying horrible things like that. And they worked with Double Fine Productions, the guys who made Brutal Legend, which I enjoyed, despite the fact that the RTS elements were kind of wacky to me. I mean, this is really bothersome. These are people that are making our video games. They're, they're the art directors for our games. It's insane. They worked with the people who made South Park, so they don't even like a 100% commit to their beliefs. And then they go online and they spew nonsense like that. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. And let's look at the other person, Osama Dorius, right? Game designer. Of course, why not? Previously worked at Blizzard Entertainment. Wow. World of Warcraft. And I wasn't just saying wow to reference it. I was just saying wow warner brothers games montreal okay of course montreal because he's over in montreal i guess he lives there ubisoft montreal etc etc one of the habibis professor okay so this guy's a professor at a college okay dawson college and of course he's an advisor at gdc go figure so he was an advisor at GDC and he's saying things like that, basically blanketing them all under one umbrella, just like Lissette is doing, blanketing all white people, all white male gamers under one umbrella. It's just insane, guys. But also pay no mind, pay absolutely zero mind to the fact that he is based in Montreal, which just so happens to be the location that Sweet Baby Inc. was founded in and currently resides within today. And it's just so interesting how much information you can discover by just taking a look at some of these people who say these awful things. You've got the same game developers from previous videos and other people from the gaming industry that I've mentioned in my previous videos. They're coming out and trying to either backpedal or pretend that the things that they've said and the things that they've done do not matter or did not happen at all. And the more that you look into this stuff, the more that you find connections that you wish you didn't find and you start to realize that it has been a big problem for a long time with people who have been given opportunities early on when gaming was just starting to really explode and take customers by storm. These people were successful and they were making names for themselves in the industry and yet there's this huge narrative that somehow everyone who is not white is being oppressed in the gaming industry. This woman right here speaks a bunch of racism <laughs> online she is living proof that someone of her ethnicity can do well in the gaming industry. Many of us who've wished since we were kids that we could be in the gaming industry will never achieve it or never have. And we're happy with our lives, but we're here, not there, and she's there. So what does that say about her so-called struggle? And once again, these are the people who defend Sweet Baby Inc. These are the people that defend Black Girl Gamers. And it's unfortunate for them that they go this far because for us, it's a blast to bring to light. And that is all I've got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't had the chance to like it and share it with your friends, that would be awesome. And hey, if you're feeling ultra spicy, consider subscribing to my channel so that you're always up to date on what kind of thing I've got going on. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Later. Meow, meow.